This world is chaos without commandments of God. That's why our brothers are drunkards, murderers, robbers, thieves of each other. Because we have not applied God's laws in our lives. It's up to you, brother. You got to come up and understand who you are in this Bible. So when you hear people say the laws are done away with, that means we should have a lawless society. Murder should be, there should be no problem with murder. There should be no problem with rape. Right. There should be no problem with adultery right. or fornication. Right. But there, it is a problem with it because God says so. Those laws can't be done away with because there would be no more uh, 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 statues between us. It'd be complete chaos, Butch. He says what? Read that again. To walk in all his ways and to love him. To do what? And to love him. God said we lost love for him. You know how we lost the love for him? We started following after the ways of the heathen. This is where, this right here made us lose all love for our God. Where is that? What in, where is this? Oh, here we go. This right here. Yeah. This made us lost all made us lose all love for our God. Because it's this God. No. It's this God. No. How you know? Yeah, so, so that would be a better depiction of God, right? Now I'm gonna show you something. Come here, come here, kids. I want you to watch, watch this, Brandy. I know you gotta go somewhere, but but I want y'all to watch, I want y'all to see this. Check this out, Brandy. I got a question, y'all man. What's your name? Huh? Rave? Rave? Who is this? Jesus? And who is this? Who is this right here? If this is Jesus, who is this? Don't know. Don't worry about it. Ain't nothing wrong with saying I don't know. What about you, my sister? Who is this right here? That's Jesus. So who is that? So how is that Jesus and that's God? He's supposed to look like, he said he looked like his father, right? So if this is Jesus, what does God look like? What does his father look like? What about you? You laughing? Why would you? It's your turn. Who is this right here? <laughs> so who is this? Who is this then? So what I'm showing you is, we have been taught that this is Jesus. Give me the book of Revelations. I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Revelations. We're going to read it. I'm going to show you. This right here is a lie, my brother. Jesus looked like you. That's right. Feel your hair. Jesus got hair like you. That's right. This right here is the lie that they have told us, our children, and everybody on the earth. Watch what the Bible says. Read. 14. 14. Go straight to it. The book of the book of Revelation, chapter one, verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says that Jesus Christ, the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white like wool. Does he have white hair? What about a white beard? That's strike one. Read on. As white as snow. It was fully white. Like my brother right here, beard. You see his beard? How he got a white beard? The top of his hair is going white. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. fire. It said that Jesus Christ, his eyes were a flame of fire. When you look in them, in them eyes right there, yeah. what color are his eyes? They're blue. Yeah. Strike two. Come on. And his feet like a two fine bird. Hold on now. Look at that feet. Now, I can see your ankles almost. See, I can see your ankles. I'm sure your ankles are the same color as the rest of your foot. Am I right? So, it said Christ's feet was what? And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass. Brown, like a penny. Yeah. Yeah. Brass is brown like a penny. Like her ankles. Like her ankles. Like her foot. Like her legs. Like her arm. Like her face. It said his feet like unto fine brass. Come on. As if they burned in a furnace. It said it, the, the brass looked like it was burned in a furnace. So if you burn something, what color does it turn? What color? Black. So if the color of Jesus in the Bible, it says he's black, who is this? Bring it out. This is the lie that they taught you, young brother. This is the lie that they taught your mother, that they taught your father, that they taught Brandy, that they taught all of us. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ 
is a black man according to the Bible. That's right. This is what you must know. Now, this your, who is this to you? That's your nephew? What's up, nephew? Now, who's going to teach nephew that Jesus Christ is a black man? You going to do that? What else are you going to teach him? What, what else are you going to teach him? You going to teach him his nationality? What's his nationality? Huh? You got Okay, so I got a question for you. How old are you? 16. Come over here and look at this sign. What is your nationality right here? What is it? What would be your nationality? See, on this side is your true nationality. On this side is what they call us in America today. Who would you be? Who are you? I can almost tell who you are. You Judah. Right. What about you, young man? Judah. You would be a so-called black man. That's what this world will call you. This world will call you, sister, a so-called black woman. Right? But is there such thing as a black woman? Is there? What color are my boots? You, know, you see you see women walk around looking like that? Humans walk around looking like that? What about white men? Do you see white men around here? What color is her shirt? I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Her shirt is white. Oh, help the sister up. Don't just look. Help the sister up. Right. Help the sister up. I'm a good So her shirt is white, right? Attention to where I'm walking instead of running my mouth. So when we say white man, is there such thing as a white man walking the earth? No. Everybody on this earth has a nationality. We have nation. We come from a nation of people. The, the, what makes us special is that God chose us out of all nations on the earth. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Let me show you something. God chose you and this young nephew of yours out of all people on the earth. But the problem is nobody is teaching us that. Nobody is teaching this young man that you are God. You like you play video games? You like the hero in the games? You like the hero, right? You the hero. You the same hero that you be playing that you be playing on that game. That's you. God made you like that. You are God on this earth. But someone has to teach you that so that you can learn how to be a God. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, verse six. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. God called us a holy people. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the children of Israel. This Bible is not written to the whole world. This Bible was written to a specific people during a specific time on the earth. It was written to the Israelites. That's but from the beginning of the book until the end of the book, the Bible is dealing with a group of people that God chose who are known as the children of Israel. They kept breaking God's commandments over and over and over. That's us today. We break God's commandments still to this day. What we're doing is trying to restore our neighborhoods, restore our young men and women so that they understand that you're God's chosen people. Right. That the kingdom of heaven belongs to you if you do what God says. God said what? For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Now what that means is God, out of all of the people on the earth, he looked at us and he said, right, that's going to be my special people. They're going to be the people that I choose right there. I choose them. He chose us, but guess what we did? Guess what we did? God chose us, but guess what we did to God? Bring it out. We turned our back. We, we turned our back on the most high God. Our forefathers did. Because did you come over here on a slave ship? Did you? Did you come to this country on a slave ship? Let me show you. Did you go through this right here? Are you going through this today, young man? What about you sisters? Are y'all going through this today? What's this called? You didn't go through this, right? Did your mother go through it? What about her mother? What about her mother? What about her mother? Yeah. And then what about her mother? or your father and your great 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 grandfathers that's who went through this but what are you a slave today no why why do you think why don't you think you're a slave today because huh because your ancestors got free i'm going to show you that you're not a slave yet you are a slave today we're still slaves right now who runs this store right here you don't know huh? it ain't your people ain't it 
Your people don't own that store. What about this one back over here? They don't own the store, right? Who works in the store? What kind of people work in the store? Black people work in the store. Hey, and here right. we go. We don't own the stores, but we work in the stores. We are God on the earth. Didn't I just tell you that? Does a God have to work? You are God. God means you rules. Give me the definition of God. Look it up real quick. You are God. While, while he looks for the definition, I want to show you something. Give me Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. I'm going to show the young man that he's a God. What you have in your presence, what you have in your arms, sister, is a God. You're holding a God in your arms, and you have no idea. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are God. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are God. God is telling us, this is the book of, the, of our Lord. He says, I have said, ye are gods, talking to the men. So if you are the son of God, if you are the daughter of God, what does that make you? Bring it up. The son of God. You're a God, brother. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. Come on. I have said, ye are God. You are God, young man. Come on. And all of you are the children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. And rise, O oh God, judge the earth. God said, rise up. Judge the earth. That's what you're supposed to do. You were brought into existence through your mother to learn that you're an Israelite, that you are God, and that you must rule this earth. That is our plight. That's right. That is what we're sent here for. But you know what? They're not going to teach you this in school. They're not going to teach you in the many churches that are around here. You go there, you get a shuck in a job, a hand clap, and you go right on about your day forgetting the message that God gave us, the what? true gospel, which is that God is going to redeem us out of this captivity we are in. We are still slaves today. That's why you said that, no, we don't own these stores, but we work in them, just like we had to work during this time. There wasn't stores then. What did we work in then? What were, what were we working then? In the what? In the field. In the fields. So now today you say, I'm free. I work in no field no more. But now when you get a job, what does it, when you're applying for a job, it asks you for your previous experience in the, in, in a specific blank of work. What is it called? Field. Field. They say, what field of work have you done before? Oh, I worked at Walmart. I did customer service. What field of work are you applying for? You're still working in the field. It's just that these fields now don't look they're not cotton fields. They're not cucumber fields. They're ABC stores. Come on, man. We need to get a mic. They're ABC stores. They're Exxon's. They're uh, Circle K's. This is where we're at now. Everything has changed. It's become modern. And it confused us to make us think that we are not slaves. But we are slaves. Can you just jump on a plane and go to Israel? What do you need? A passport. But a God, he don't need a passport if he was free. Right. He could travel and go where he want to go. Where's that definition? Definition of the word God. This is the definition for the word God. The supreme or ultimate reality. It says that a God is the supreme or ultimate reality. I don't know what's going on here. Get it right. A God is the supreme or ultimate reality, read. Such as the being perfect in power, wisdom, and goodness. That's what you're supposed to be. A man of power, wisdom, and goodness. Wait. You understand? That's what we're supposed to be, brother. Wait. But here in this country, hey. that's, that's not who we are. Wait. We have been degraded by every means. They call us thugs, gangsters, hoodlums. They just murdered our brother in Memphis, Tennessee. Right. Five brothers just killed their own brother in Memphis, Tennessee. Because we have been taught that we are less than a God. Because we have not been taught by the words of God. We're done with that. Go back hey. to Deuteronomy chapter, chapter uh, 12, 10 and verse 12. Because it's important that you sisters and these two brothers understand who you are. You should not lo no longer let nobody call you a black woman. You got to understand that you're a princess. Right. And God says to keep his commandments. 
You not just no average, average little sister walking the earth. You are real princesses, like you are the living sons, li living sons and daughters of God. Right. That's who you are. The blood that's in your vein is the same blood in Jesus Christ. That's what you got to remember. But you're not going to learn that in this world. This world is not going to teach us that. Had this world taught us that we were the sons and daughters of God, you think we'd still be in this position right now that we're in? No. You think we have to go to them on Sabbath day? Because the day is the Sabbath day. It's God's Sabbath day. We shouldn't be buying or selling. If we were in rulership, everything that you see moving would not be moving. Because today is the Lord's day. We got to come back to that. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel. It says, now Israel, because that's you all. You're Israelites. You ain't no niggas. You're not no spicks. You're not no coons. You're not no thugs, no gangsters. You're not no thoughts. You are not these degrading names that we call ourselves look like bees and hoes. That is not you. Do not let this world degrade you and put you in that position. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Read. What do the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of us? He requires us to understand who we are and to come back to keeping his commandments. This world is lost without the commandments of God. This world is chaos without commandments of God. That's why our brothers are drunkards, murderers, robbers, thieves of each other. Because we have not applied God's laws in our lives. It's up to you, brother. You got to come up and understand who you are in this Bible. Find out who you are and apply it to your life. Become the man that God requires you to be. Free. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. This is what we're missing. Nobody's teaching us to love God with all our heart and all our soul. Right. It's lost in our, in, our, in, in our homes, from our mothers, our fathers, from our sisters and brothers across the world. We are not taught to love God with all our heart and all our soul. Right. If our brothers had God's love in them, Terry Nicholas would still be alive today. That's right. If our brothers had any sense of understanding who they were and Jesus Christ abiding in them, they would not have murdered their own brothers on the streets of Memphis just this past week. Right. There is no love for us. There's no love between us in this country. Give that in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. This Bible is our history book. It is high time we wake up and understand who we are in the book. Not just look at the book or keep it on our shelves, letting it collect dust. We must apply God's laws in these last days. That's right. Read what you got. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. God has been begging and praying with us from the time this book has been written. He said, hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. Read. For the Lord have a controversy with thee. The Lord got a problem with Israel. You are Israel. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you are the Israelites. That's Read. Right. For the Lord have a controversy with the in inhabitants of the land. God has a problem with the inhabitants of this land. Right. What is the problem that God has? Read. Because there is no truth. There's no what? There is no truth. God says there is no truth. Come on. No mercy. No mercy. Our brothers had no mercy for Terry. Read. Right. No knowledge of there is no what? No knowledge of God in the land. There is no knowledge of God in this land. If you had knowledge of God, what you say name again, brother? Rave. You would understand from the time that you were being brought up that you are God. The principles of being a man would have been being instilled in you from the time of birth. Right. But we're not raised like that today in America. Right. We're not raised like that today in Columbia, South Carolina. Right. We're not raised like that across the earth. We're not raised like that. But these, this is a new day. This is the day that you learn that you are the son of the living God. That's right. That's who you are. That's who these men around you are. We are the sons of God. Back on this earth to reclaim what belongs to us, which is this earth. But what does it take? It takes us teaching our young men. It takes us teaching our young men, our young women. This little baby right here has to understand from the time of right now as he grows up that he is a God. That his purpose on earth is to fulfill the duty of God. What is the nation? Nation.
indigenous men leading by example. 